Hey, in this episode, we are going to unbox and assemble these Razor Eco Smart electric scooters. Welcome to Urban Monk TV. Okay, so I know we normally are doing much uh, more serious, more in-depth motorcycle work and custom work on this channel uh, and, you know, using pretty serious tools, but um, it's Christmas time. My wife and I bought our kids a couple of uh, electric scooters. They are, uh, they're not really toys. These things are built with a nice steel frame and 36 volt. They got a 500 watt motor and they'll go like 18 miles an hour. Uh, this is a significant upgrade for our teenage daughters and I'm excited to give them to them. So um, I'm gonna unbox one and we'll assemble it together and you can see how these things are put together and how they're built. So the first thing I'll tell you, uh, first hint is find the top and the bottom of the shipping box that it came in if you had it delivered to your door. I assume you did if you're watching this video. Um, and we're gonna open the bottom first, but we're gonna do that before we set it down. You'll see why in a second. So figure out, figure out what floor area you're gonna use and then leave it on its end and get your knife out and we'll cut the bottom open. and you may see what I'm already driving at. You've got a box within a box here, and this is the bottom. So I'll tip it, flip that tap under, flip these out, and bring it down. Now, as I pull this top box off, I'm looking at the top of the crate. Otherwise, you're upside down, you're struggling with it. Um, that's the easiest way to unbox the first box. This next part is not immediately obvious. Uh, on all four corners, you have staples, these big ones. You also have these, but they don't have anything to do with holding the top onto the sides. Only these do, and they're on two here and two here on all four corners. I just found a small needle nose pliers and get under it and pull them out. And then I'm going to do that to all four corners. So there's four of those staples per corner. Should be a total of 16. I found one corner that only had three in it, so how about that for quality control? Uh, at least it's just the packaging. So, with those removed, the top comes off easy as you can imagine. So the first thing to remove here is big chunks of packing material. No, not that one. Well, okay, these two, and then pull out your front wheel. that aside. Once the front wheel is out, you can take out the seat assembly, set that aside, and the basket, if you bought one that comes with the basket, I guess that's an option. That packing material can stay there's one here. Do you want to slide up and out? And then this is the rear rack. Let's go ahead and take that out of its packaging. I'm just going to 
set that down for now. And all that's left now is the base, the battery, rear wheel, motor, and the front handlebars and controls assembly all connected. But the handlebars are taken off and strapped in here. So take out this packing material. And this is where you want to be a little careful pulling it out. Um, it's a little heavy, and you uh, you know got to lift it out of here. Uh, don't strain your back if you don't think you're up to lifting this thing. I don't know what it weighs, um, but the cables that go from the brake controls and the throttle controls are already all connected. There's no, you know, wiring to do here. There's no uh, assembling of the motor and the drivetrain. It's all been done for you. So assembly is actually very simple. Um, but don't let the handlebars fall off and yank all of those cable assemblies while you're lifting this out. Make sure you lift it all as a unit. Bring the front up first. And then just lift the whole thing out. And then I find it helpful to put down the kickstand. Alright, time to get this big box out of the way. Your assembly instructions are in the bag that is zip tied on to the steering stem here. Um, I just got a clippers, wire clippers. Uh, or bolt clippers, you may want to just use a scissors, that's fine. But hold on to this, because it is wired and separate. There we go. I'm going to leave all the tags on. At this point, here's a, a helpful hint. Obviously, anybody who is disassembling one of these is anxious to ride it. Right now, while you're assembling it, is a good time to plug the charger in and uh, get the battery charging, because you do need to do an initial charge uh, to make sure you bring this thing up to full charge before you use it. Do not use it before doing a full charge first. Uh, the batteries need that full charge for conditioning, and you can kind of set the tone for the life of the battery and your range uh, with that initial use. So don't abuse your batteries right out of the box. Charge them up fully. Have patience. So the battery charger is a pretty simple thing. It looks almost like uh, something you'd get with a, well, any electronic device, uh, PC or maybe a flat screen TV, but uh, obviously you've got a plug on one end and then the end that goes into the bike is a nice quality XLR uh, male connector. You may, um, you, those of you who are musicians will be familiar with this type of plug, but you know, it's a good plug, not something cheap. And right down here is the on off switch. Go ahead and take that tape off. And here's where you plug the charger in. You just rotate this thing. And line up your pins and plug it in. And what you'll see on the charger is it'll go from a red light, that means it's charging, and when that goes green you're fully charged. The instructions are pretty simple um, and so are the tools. Uh, I, I can't say a lot of great things about these tools. What I'm sure they are is inexpensive for the manufacturer. And what they are is functional. You will get this assembled with these, but you'll struggle. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use my tools and wrenches, but just know that you don't have to have, you can do it with this. Essentially, you've got two Allen wrenches, five millimeter, and I don't remember what this is, larger. Um, you got three spanners or open end wrenches and the problem with these is how thin they are so you know keeping it aligned on your nut while you're working with it is is a struggle and that's why I like to use my regular tools and then these are these do the trick but they're just clumsy 
Uh, and this is a spoke tightener, so that'll be a handy thing. I'll keep that in my toolbox after this project. Next we want to get this steering stem on, so just take all this packaging material off. This is just a rubber plug. Discard. Don't need it. The bag comes off with the charger and all the instructions. And there is a little spring release tab right here. Um, you need to press that in and push down. The thing is, this comes tight, so loosen it first. This is why... Okay. Right there is why I don't like those. So much easier. Alright. So press the button in and slide this down onto the steering stem, into the, which is at the top of the fork. And you may have to kind of finesse it. I'm holding the fork with my feet as I put that on. And then it clicks in place. And there's a little play here, so you're going to want to leave it loose right now. I'm going to put the front tire on now. You could do this in opposite order and start with the front tire. Take this packing material out. You don't need that. So then on your front tire, you've got a nut on the axle and one of these safety washers. It's got a little hook in it. I'll show you why that's a, called a safety washer later. There's one on each side. So go ahead, throw this thing on. Rotation of this tire doesn't seem to matter. I looked for an arrow, because many tires come with a direction of rotation indicated. This thing doesn't seem to have one, so I guess it doesn't matter. And just simply align it like that. So you've got this inside nut on the axle inside the fork on both sides. Then, this is really important. When you put the washer on, you have to have that little hook in this hole. That's in case your nut loosens up, the wheel will not fall off. When you're doing wheelies! And then just put your nut on. Yeah, I'm doing it left-handed and that's not working out for me. There you go. And same on the other side. Okay, now we've got to tighten them up. So again, you can use the supplied tools. It's okay. Um, not great. It certainly would keep a guy from... Well, there, I just bent it, so... You're not going to over torque these, that's for sure. This is now ruined. Um, so I guess that's as tight as I'll get with that with these wrenches. Um, this is 15 millimeter. I'm going to get a real wrench on this and just snug it up. Good. So I put my feet around the wheel so it doesn't move and then just line this up. I just eyeball it. But you want it at least close. And this is the 5mm nut. Let's get it snug. Once it's snug, then you can adjust it and leave it and give it a little bit more torque on a clamp. <clears throat> so you'll notice the clamp is not lined up, but the handlebars are with my front wheel. And that's the geometry that matters. I used this Allen wrench for the bottom. Can't stand that thing. I'm gonna finish the top one with a decent wrench. If you do get out a good wrench though, don't overdo it, because this is aluminum and it's pretty soft. Next step is the seat assembly.
before you go putting this tube down in here, you want to get your rack in between there. But they come with all of these bolts and nuts uh, tightened too much for that to fit through. So start by loosening all of those. These are 10 millimeter nut and the 5 millimeter Allen. Don't take them out, just loosen them uh, quite a bit. You know, until, until the bolt almost comes out of the nut. Put the warning sticker up. This bolt up. This little thing pointing down. And run your seat post through it and into the frame. And then, I don't know. Right now I'm just eyeballing the height. I'll have to adjust this to my girdles. And this clamp is the larger Allen. off the top of the rear wheel and uh, you know aligned with the rear wheel almost like it's a mud guard or fender Oops. and then just start tightening these up with your 10 millimeter holding the nut and don't crank one side down bring this together evenly let me give you a closer look so on this clamp, when you're done, you want this gap between the two plates to be, you know, roughly the same on both sides. Uh, don't crank it down all on one side and then you'll have a large gap over here. Come at it evenly, so that means just kind of going back and forth here. I think this is the trickiest part. Um, first, there's some little rubber doodads on here. I took those off. I guess you could leave them on, but I think they'll get in the way. And then take your bolt out of the back of the rack. And essentially what happens is you take these two tabs and they go up under this bar right here in the little gap below. And you start you know, aiming down into it and then you feel like you're bending it and you are. But the goal is to line up this rear hole with the threads on the back so the bolt can be put in. And uh, it's a little tricky. You've got to kind of finesse it. And then once I got it finger tight, I can use my wrench. And again, that's the 5 millimeter Allen. Don't overdo it. A little concerned about this galvanized washer here. If this got wet, um, that's going to rust. I mean, I know it's galvanized, but I've seen a lot of rusty galvanized parts over in my lifetime, so it's kind of a cheap way to go. But stainless, I think, would have been a better idea, but I know that's more expensive. And the light on my charger has already gone green, so that's good news for me and my girls. So with that, we are done. It is charged, it is assembled, it is ready to ride, just need some adjustment on the seat. That is it. a no slip it's really rough like sandpaper that's kind of cool and I believe this is made out of bamboo which is a very renewable wood resource 
I also like that the drivetrain is completely sealed and covered in here. Obviously there's just a chain in there, or possibly a belt. Um, I don't know if there's any adjustment to it. I may learn in time, but uh, I got a feeling that's many miles away. The brake is a simple, very simple drum style brake. Um, we'll see how adequate that is. There is only one brake, but then again, you're only going 18 miles an hour at the most. But it's hilly around here. Having not ridden it yet, I'll share my thoughts on construction before um, I'll finish this video up with a little commentary on riding it, but I have to wait till after Christmas when we actually present these things. Um, frame is fantastic. It's a nice, solid steel frame. It appears to have a powder coated uh, paint finish, which is, I know, uh, strong and durable. Um, it's simple. I mean, I found assembly to be very, very simple. Oh, one more thing. Uh, make sure you check your tire pressure before you go. I think the tag said 31 PSI, and uh, the tires themselves say 40. So, I don't know, split the difference somewhere in there. But have them over 31 anyways before you go riding. There is some air in them, but they're, they're pretty squishy. Um, I love it. I'm excited to ride this thing myself. So that's going to be a wrap for this. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, again, for my regular viewers, this is uh, a little bit different content, but hey, it is two wheels, so I think it applies. And if you're new to my channel, if you happen to like uh, custom vintage motorcycle work and uh, I'm building a cafe racer from absolutely the ground up, total teardown and restoration, including engine top end rebuild. Um, and then I also do adventure uh, motorcycling on my Suzuki V-Strom. Subscribe if you like what I'm doing here and click the thumbs up and thank you for watching.